okay good morning you can you see the slide yes sir yes sir okay today we will start with chapter one so introduction to pneumatic so as i said uh, previously the pneumatic and either uh, other subject related to the thermo fluid so this is on the application side the initial So initially we were studying on uh, thermal fluid on the theory side, okay, and uh, in pneumatic and aerodynamic we will see on the application side, okay. So the lecture will be given by me, uh, but uh, the notes if you realize uh, I written here, Muhammad Sharif Sharif. So you are the previous lecturer for this subject, this subject and also thermal. So both the subject, the lecture notes are not prepared by me. So I need to give on the credit to the person who prepared. So it's um, Mr. Muhammad Sharif Sharif. Okay, so the lecture note is not from me. Okay, so we will start. I hope you all are ready. I already pre put the lecture note in Google Classroom. You can get the lecture note from uh, your Google Okay, so we will start with introduction to transmission power system. Okay, so three basic methods of transmitting power. Okay, so power can be transmitted through mechanical way, electrical way, or grid power. Okay, so mechanical meaning uh, you are doing some mechanical mechanism in order to transfer power from one one side to another side. Okay, so it can be like pushing or lifting a weight. Okay, and electrical, uh, you you know, so you on the electric uh, electrical supply, so it will start to push the piston. So it's similar like that. Okay, so mechanical earlier using gears or piston. Okay, that happened mechanically. Okay, there's another power we call it as a fluid power okay so fluid power uh, is uh, something to use uh, fluid in order to move something okay so fluid you know it can be gas or uh, liquid okay gas or liquid okay so uh, we know that in thermal fluid fluid meaning gas or liquid Okay, so we know in this function, so you can use liquid to generate fluid power or you use gas to generate power. Okay, so if you see here, we have, you can see, you can see the pointer moving. Yeah, we can, sir. Okay. So, uh, if you see one, two, uh, three. So, pneumatic, you are using gas. Okay. Uh, fluid divided into two, uh, gas or liquid. So, pneumatic uses gas uh, to power the system, and hydraulic uses uh, liquid. Okay, that's the two different. So, liquid is not necessarily have to be water. It can be uh, oil. Okay, so normally for hydraulic system, we will use uh, hydraulic oil. Oil. Okay, so we have uh, two system: so pneumatic and hydraulic. So in this uh, subject, we will study specifically on the pneumatic and also hydraulic. Okay, so maybe you you have other subjects that cover electrical and electrical powers. Okay, but in this subject, we will study pneumatic power and hydraulic power. Okay, so in practice, most application actually use the combination of the three methods to achieve the most efficient overall system. Okay, so if you go to industry, so you won't see a system comprises of only pneumatic. 
or on, only hydraulic. So normally we will have combination of mechanical, electrical and fluid power. Okay. Why the reason is to achieve the most efficient overall system. Okay, so that's what we need to Okay, so you can see comparison between uh, pneumatic, hydraulic and also electric. So, so we have a few characteristics, the complexity. So pneumatic is quite simple. Okay, so power. The power normally we will use hydraulic. So hydraulic is like um, to lift a car in the car workshop. So normally you will press the button, the piston will slowly extend. Uh, so you will you can deal with a bigger power. So hydraulic normally we will use for bigger power. Okay, then size you can see it so depends. So low size, very low size or force. The control, so you're just using a simple valve. Okay, here we will use the electrical controller. Okay, position accuracy, the electric A is better, the speed. Uh, so pneumatic, we always uh, relate it with speed. It will be very fast. Because uh, you can compress and uh, you can make it to do a faster job. Okay, so normally for pneumatic, we will consider it for the fast speed and for hydraulic, we will uh, we will use hydraulic system for high power and also accuracy. Accuracy. Okay. The purchase cost. Uh, so normally pneumatic will be low. Okay. So operating cost for hydraulic is high. So that's why very high to set up a car workshop because you need to install a lot of stuff. The okay. maintenance cost. So when the operation cost is high, so maintenance also high because you need to constantly change the oil. Uh, so simple hydraulic system uh, combination. Uh, but in the car, we don't have pneumatic. We normally will less have hydraulic and also electric. So that's the reason why every three months or six months, we need to change our engine. Because I know. So it's not like one time you buy, then uh, you use forever. So you need to always maintain. Then utilities, pneumatic, you have an additional compressor. Compress the air before you use. Uh, uh, but in, in hydraulic, you just use pump to transmit the hydraulic fluid from one place to another place. Electrical, you just use power. So it's already generated in the hydroelectric dam. It's already safe. You just apply to your home. So you just use. Okay, efficiency. So electric is higher. So reliability. The pneumatic is good, fairly good. So that's why in the industry, you can see in the production line, uh, all the automation system, and the robot are pneumatic. Maintenance. Pneumatic is okay. so we continue. We, you will study a few of your thermofluid uh, lectures in this uh, chapter. Okay, because this is just an introduction. Okay, so fluid power is a method of using pressurized fluid to transmit energy. Okay, so you 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 know thermofluid is uh, dealing with pressure. Okay, so I think uh, last semester pun kita ada belajar pasal pressure. Okay, so when you pressurize something, uh, it will contain a lot of energy. So you can use that to transmit energy. Itu yang kita panggil as fluid power. Okay, so fluid, as I say, it consists of liquid or gas. Okay, so it's uh, referred as fluid. So, here there are two branches of fluid power. Okay, this are the pneumatic. So, pneumatic related to gas. 
hydraulic related to the liquid. Okay, so hydraulic system use liquid to transfer force from one point to another. Okay, so liquid can be anything. It can be water, it can be oil, it can be Newtonian fluid, non-Newtonian fluid, apa-apalah. Anything uh, yang dalam kategori liquid. Okay, pneumatic system use air to trans transfer force from one point to another. Okay, air. So normally kita akan untuk pneumatic system, we will compress the air. So air ada dua. Two uncompressed. Uncompressed uh, something yang ada dekat uh, your surrounding. Uh, oxygen yang ada dekat surrounding. So it's a, it's, it's a form of air. Uh, gunakan air ni, you only can generate the wind power. Uh, wind power tu is not so useful in pneumatic system lah. Okay, but if you want to use air in your pneumatic system, you can compress dia dulu. Compress, letak dalam tank, and then you can use. Okay. System uses air. Okay, so air is compressible. So, you boleh baca dekat sini. Okay, the sponge is compressible and squeezed into smaller size. Similar lah. So, air can be, air particle you tahu macam mana. So, pergerakan zara dalam motor. So, kalau let's like, like, say fill of uh, air. So, inside, you boleh compress as much as you can. Okay, so air is compressible. But liquid is incompressible. So, but, kalau nak compress pun, compress sikit. So, it's not so compressible. Okay, so, kita consider liquid. Dah boleh dimampai. Okay, so definition and principle used in uh, pneumatic and hydraulic. Okay, so the definition. Okay, so pneumatic kita boleh buat uh, kata pneumatic tu kita boleh percaya kepada dua. Okay, pneuma. So pneuma bermaksud berat atau bernafas. Okay, uh, it's not berat lah, breathe lah dan bernafas. So, yang ni dalam uh, Greek, a language Greek. So, pneuma means bread or something. Okay, bread selalu kita akan gunakan gas kan? Nah, ataupun oksigen. So, bernafas while matic. Matic bermaksud dalam Greek adalah power. So, tenaga. So, the term pneumatic describes the use of compressed air in drive and petrol engine. Okay, so, kita gunakan uh, air, compressed air to power the systems. The introduction of pneumatic into machinization and automation began in the middle of 20th century. So, yeah, in 1950s, 1960s, uh, so, waktu uh, Industrial Revolution uh, 2.0, 1.0 uh, waktu tu lah. Sekarang industri, uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. So, kita gunakan automation and also cloud. Okay, so, to power so many system. Okay, uh, so, tapi yang ni in the beginning of Industrial Revolution. Ya, Aiman Hakim, kenapa nak annotate? Eh tak, tertekan saya. Okey. Boleh, boleh tengok. Okey, okey, tak apa. Saya dah cancel dah. Okey. Um. So, pneumatic is an application of compressed air to power machine or control or regulate machine. Okay, so, yeah, I'm actually repeating. Lah. Okay, so, maybe defined as a branch of engineering science which deals with the study of behavior and application of compressed air. So, pneumatic, the field uh, related dengan compressed air. So, kalau you ingat pneumatic, you kena ingat 
compress air. Okay, so apa apa yang digunakan dalam tu is compress air. So if you say katakan dalam exam saya tanya, so what is pneumatic? Jangan cakap engineering science which deal with air. Uh, air bermaksud udara yang ada di keliling. So you need to mention the keyword adalah compress air. Okay, so you need to use this. It can also be defined as a branch of fluid power technology that deals with generation uh, transmission. Generation bermaksud penghasilan. And so, uh, moving from one place to another place. And control. Control maksudnya you use something to do some job. Uh, so, you gunakan pressurized air. So, you boleh gunakan uh, term compressed air ataupun pressurized air. So, uh, yang ini semua adalah definition dia lah. Gas in a pneumatic system behave like a spring since it is compressible. Yeah. Um, uh, you boleh compress a spring. Uh, so, waktu you compress tu, a uh, lot of power is inside. So, you lepas, you boleh gunakan spring tu untuk buat uh, a lot of job. Similar lah. Okay, so, for example, the entire an air cushion spring compress air acts as a cushion to absorb shock. This is the air cushion. We can see this one. This one is the example. The air brake uh, on locomotives and large trucks contribute greatly to the safety of railroad and truck transportation. So, yang ni you boleh tengok lah. So, you ada compressor. Basalkan compress air. Then, you have a hose. Nah, yang ni tank lah. You compress, you simpan dalam air. Reservoir. Reservoir maksudnya dia macam empangan lah. Ataupun uh, simpanan. Tangki simpanan. Nah, macam tung gas dekat rumah. So, dia asalkan gas. Dia store dalam tank. Tank ni you boleh bergerak ke mana-mana. So similar lah pneumatic pun dia ada. Okay. You can either use compress terus guna dekat application tanpa reservoir. Ataupun you boleh hasilkan uh, compress air simpan dulu dan uh, yang simpan tu you gunakan macam boleh juga. So either way lah. Okay then you have valve. Okay so you ada valve dekat sini to channel. LPU channel. Okay, then ini adalah actuator cylinder. So, you boleh tengok. So, angin masuk dekat sini. So, you follow the arrow. You follow the arrow. Uh, kalau uh, yang ini adalah saya panggil as piston lah. Uh, so, if the air enters here, uh, dia akan push benda ni. So, cylinder you, uh, dia bergerak ke atas. Bergerak ke atas. So, you boleh tengok dalam dalam sedia ni. So, you have to bahagian yang atas ni pun ada udara. Yang bawah pun ada udara. So, kalau udara yang lebih masuk dekat sini. So, it will move the piston. Move the piston. So, udara yang ada dekat atas ni dia akan keluar. Keluar dekat outlet. Dia akan pergi ke environment lah. Okay. So, yang ni untuk uh, kecilkan silinder. So, piston tu akan jadi kecil. Dia akan masuk. So, kalau you nak dia extend, cylinder ni extend, piston ni extend, you tukar lah. Okay, so you tukar, you gerakkan uh, benda ni. Yang kita panggil as wall. So, you naikkan yang ni, dia, dia tengok. Dia punya pergerakan tu berubah. Udara masuk, uh, dia ikut yang atas. Dia ikut yang atas. So, sama juga ada dua ruang uh, dipisahkan oleh this piston. Uh, so, dia akan push. So, piston ni akan extend. So, udara yang ada kat bawah ni keluar pula. Okay. So, that's how valve is used to control your cylinder. So, this can be, uh, yang ni adalah linear cylinder lah. Linear maksudnya cuma uh, bergerak ke kanan atau kiri. Uh, so, kalau you gunakan motor, as a actuator, dia akan berputar. 
Uh, so you can use a lot of uh, things using the method. Okay, so application area of pneumatic. So nowadays compressed air can be found in almost all engine all field of engineering. So it can be in any field, lah. So industry, uh, the company, so railway transport, motor vehicle, dalam kereta pun ada juga pneumatic sikit. Okay, so and then shipping, construction, trade, uh, transport, mining, medicine, defense. So any any area lah. Any area. So yang biasa kita tengok adalah dekat kedai kedai motor ke ataupun kedai kereta. Okay, so you want to fill your uh, your tire. Okay, you nak know, isi angin. So you pergi dekat workshop. Dia selalunya you boleh tengok uh, you nak you ambil the pipe you nak letak dekat your tire. Uh, after some time, you boleh dengar compressor tu start berbunyi. Uh, kalau you biasa tengok lah. Uh, so, so, that is a, uh, application of using compressed air. Uh, so, dalam tire, memang kita gunakan compressor. Sebab itu, tire tu dia akan kembang. Okay, and it can absorb vibration. Okay, so boleh tengok dekat sini, application area. So, you can use a linear motion macam tadi, gunakan piston. Okay, kalau boleh, you boleh buat kerja clamping, feeding, lifting, lowering, opening, closing. Ada banyak lah. So, dekat industri, you use industrial robot. Industrial robot for, for you to move. So, you, you can use either hydraulic or magnetic. So, normally industrial robot it's a light application uh, and you want it to do things fast so you use animate so yang ni linear motion uh, yang ni adalah rotary motion rotary maksudnya berputar okay, uh, like screwdriver, grinder uh, thread cutter, drill uh, application yang melibatkan yang ni lah the application in control, sequence control, monitoring, locking so if you have a few controls, uh, so you perlukan satu control system, you, so you can manage. So sequential control, maksudnya after one sequence, you do another sequence. So the other step. Okay, so others workshop, uh, pin, pin spray. Uh, if you see a car painting shop, uh, they gonna can uh, pneumatic. So it's connected to the end. Uh, so you got the end to be connected again pin. So you use uh, pneumatic to assist the painting. So what to paint the lekat? Because the pneumatic is pushes the spray, the paint to the wall, wall of your car. So the number scatter and also it like very strong. It can last for years. The characteristic of air. Okay. Uh, air, I think, Yani, you ada baca juga, you tahu, you learn in physics. So, air, it has its own characteristic. So, characteristic of air is, is minimal co cohesion force. Uh, so, the, uh, in example, the force between the air molecules are to be reduced to gather for operating condition, usually pneumatic. In common with all gases, air has no particular shape. Uh, so, dia, a uh, gas, dia memenuhi ruang. So, you can just fill any space. Uh, kalau botol, dia boleh isi, uh, dia boleh, boleh penuhi botol. So, similar juga dengan water lah. Tapi water, uh, it has some uh, cohesion force. But air, it has a minimal cohesion force between air molecules. So air is a mixture of different gases. So you have environmental air. Okay, so it consists of 70% of 70% ni adalah nitrogen. So nitrogen. 21% is oxygen. The one that we use to breathe. 
Okay, so carbon dioxide from us used by the plants. So apart from that, we have argon, hydrogen, neon, helium, krypton, xenon, and also water vapor in our surrounding air. So for practical application within normal temperature and pressure range, air can be considered as an ideal gas and the equation of state for gases can be applied. Yani you WSL demand thermal fluid. Okay, so ideal gas equation, equation of state. Okay, so air is considered as ideal gas. Okay, so ideal gas and you can use equation of state in the calculation. Allow the uh, the millibartan calculation. Okay, so subject may easier to score so about the fully skill. Okay, and uh, less theory and also less calculation. Okay, so I hope you all can focus lah. Okay, focus on scoring the subject. Kalau you boleh score or thermal fluid, you suppose boleh score. You will have no problem lah. Suppose no problem in scoring this subject. Okay, so compress air, so compress air, or kita juga panggil as pressurized air. Okay, so we learn some fundamentals about any other like introduction lecture. So you learn some fundamental lah, something yang you already maybe know, or already study into movie. Yes, okay, so compress, compress atmospheric air, which stores energy in its uh, complex uh, state usually greater than that of the atmosphere and as the potential to perform work. Okay, so normal air is for your breathing. Compress air to perform work. So itu adalah thing. If you want to put it simply lah. Sebab dia memang ada banyak explanation dekat sini. So, this, all this explanation will be good for your understanding. We tak perlu pergi cari kalau tu compress the lecture note pun. So I don't need to like discuss a lot. I only discuss important, important stuff. So I think some of you at the comment juga dalam the subject evaluation form. Last semester cakap lecture note uh, not simplified. Okay, so first thing the lecture note is not prepared by me. Okay, another thing the lecture note ada banyak info. So that you boleh baca sendiri and also understand. Okay, apart from whatever I teach dalam lecture. So dalam lecture, I only focus on important stuff. Okay, yang not important stuff, you boleh baca. Baca and understand. Okay. Okay, so uh, among the simplest way that air can be taken from atmosphere and compressed within a smaller volume is through the use of enzymes. So I think you all biasa guna. Siapa siapa pernah guna yang ni? Hand pump. Kita alas kan. Ah, apa ada kan sekarang? Uh, sekarang ada hand pump, ada lift pump. Ting zaman zaman dulu pun ada dah. Okay, so kita alas kalau kalau pergi ke kedai ke. Uh, so I think siapa ada? Okay. So what it does? You ada satu Ruang uh, uh, So when you have uh, some space, so you have volume. You can fill it with volume. Okay, so this this is very small volume. Okay, so apa yang dia buat? Ah, uh, ni kalau you tarik ke atas, okay, udara akan masuk. Udara dari luar akan masuk. Then you mampai. Okay, then you mampai. Uh, then you sign it to the tire. You sign it to the tire. Okay, yang ni kita panggil as end pump. Okay, you see how the end pump works. Bicycle pump lah. Uh, which takes end pump it into the bike. And person immediately pushes the end of foot pedal. You boleh gunakan foot ataupun end. Uh, kalau you constantly do, uh, so it uh, become compressed. When the pedal is compressed, air enters the pump through the intake into the kidney and uh, push into the bike tire via the plunger. So the cap tire at the tube can via the satu tempat untuk masukkan angin. Okay, so we call it as plunger. 
okay, through the pump casing. Once the air is enter the tire, it officially become compressor. Okay, so the alarm tire, they automatically they generally compress air. Ah, uh, so about to you boleh tengok. So you know, ah, uh, previously kita tengok fluid power kan last. So it will push out to the surface. So some of uh, gas pump they can push to the surface. So about to you boleh tengok the tire become bigger. Okay, as the air enters. Okay, so about. Uh, it officially become compressed air when compressed air so all the molecules of the air they can push to the surface surface yang ada tu dia can push so surface tu dia can kembang lah okay. okay and the more air that enters result in higher air pressure within the volume of air I think this is just a for your understanding Okay, so gauge pressure, I think uh, something uh, you are very familiar with in this equation, that's uh, absolute pressure. So I, I kind of butcher a lot of stuff because of me. Okay, so you will think of the gambar ni. Okay, so you have gauge pressure. Uh, gauge pressure dalam bahasa Melayu adalah tekanan alat. Gauge, gauge maksudnya something yang you ukur, you gunakan untuk ukur tekanan. Okay, pressure. Okay, so you you ada atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure adalah the, your surrounding pressure. Okay, atmospheric pressure ni you tak dapat control lah. So you say it's available. Okay, so different. Maybe higher place, atmospheric pressure dia lain. Uh, lower lower uh, place atmospheric pressure dia lain okay so it uh, varies depend on your location okay so maybe in police different atmospheric pressure uh, the KKL different atmospheric pressure so the Kajo or Sabah Sarawak uh, maybe a different atmospheric pressure tapi uh, the atmospheric pressure is uncontrollable so it's available okay so gauge pressure is taken from your atmospheric pressure to the final pressure from your dikatakan macam uh, tire tadi ke dalam tu ada pressure uh, so you boleh teng tengok waktu you nak isi angin kita kereta tire kereta ke uh, so you think you boleh tengok meter bergerak okay as the compressor enters so you can uh, your pressure gauge will show is increasing. Uh, so itu adalah yang kita gunakan as a gauge pressure. Okay, then you have a zero pressure. Satu point yang no pressure at all. Okay, so no pressure at all. So your gauge pressure tadi dia meningkat. So katakan atmospheric pressure ni adalah uh, tekan 10 bar okay, 10 bar So you 20 So dekat sini kosong So kosong 10, 20 So absolute pressure is 10 plus 10 So dekat sini 10 uh, Dekat sini 10 So the absolute pressure Okay so Yang ni adalah pressure alat Atmospheric pressure adalah Pressure per sekitaran and zero pressure is a situation where no pressure at all. Okay, then you have a vacuum pressure. Vacuum pressure maksudnya kurang daripada atmospheric pressure. So, dia uh, kena minus lah. Okay, so, katakan yang ni adalah 10 bar. Uh, so, yang ni maybe 7 bar. So, you vacuum pressure adalah 3 bar. Okay. You baca dekat sini, kena baca. okay, so what is a very important here? Pneumatic are mainly concerned with uh, gauge pressure less than 10 bar. Okay, so pneumatic pressure, uh, pneumatic, here adalah satu sistem yang digunakan untuk application bertekanan rendah. If you compare to hydraulic. 
So pneumatic is dealing with lesser pressure. Okay, so normally will be less than 10 bar. Okay, so less than 10 bar. Uh, so the difference between absolute and this pressure can be significant. But so just since is uh, is dealing with a smaller pressure, uh, to indicate a pressure change point, it can be measured. Okay, so pressure measurement. Okay, so, uh, is, uh, you can use a lot of instruments. Uh, yang kita panggil as pressure gauge. Okay, pressure gauge dalam bahasa Melayu ada solo tekanan. Okay, solo tekanan. Okay, ataupun alat untuk mengukur tekanan. Or you can use a vacuum gauge. So, Uh, tadi kita tengok, so kalau above atmospheric pressure, you gunakan pressure gauge. Kalau you nak ukur something yang below, below your atmospheric pressure, you gunakan vacuum gauge. Sebab tu dia ada dua. Okay, so you boleh tengok mechanical arrangement dalam pressure gauge. So pressure is entering. Uh, so as the pressure enters, it will push. When you push further, so you are the gear the casini. So when this thing is moving beside, sorry, the, uh, when the air enters here, so it will push, push inward. When it push inward, sorry, uh, when it air enters, so it will push further. Uh, dia akan tarik benda ni keluar the increasing pressure so it will tarik keluar so when it tarik keluar so this will be in uh, anti-clockwise dia akan bergerak ke sini kalau dia ni dia bergerak ke sini uh, yang uh, pointer ni dia akan bergerak ke atas yeah. increasing pressure the pointer will go up sama lah so when the pressure enters and ni dia akan naik ke atas Okay, so standard pressure gauge, so the modern tube pressure gauge, diaphragm pressure gauge, and the piston spring pressure gauge. So, for design and terrain, just the mechanical arrangement alone. Okay, so if you want to see, you can maybe Google lah. So how to see, uh, if you want to see the difference between the construct. Okay, so some of the gas principle use the pneumatic. Uh, so since it's dealing with gas, so one thing yang you boleh gunakan adalah ideal gas equation. Ideal gas equation you boleh gunakan. Since gas is considered as ideal gas, okay, then apart from that, you juga boleh gunakan a Boyle's law. It's a P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. Constant your Charles law okay, V1 over V2 equals to V1 over P2. Okay, v is your volume, P is your pressure, P is your thermodynamic temperature, upon absolute temperature. So here you can use Charles law or you can use a Morton law. So normally we will just change between these three. Uh, so, when you take it, it utilizes pressure and volume, volume and, and temperature. Uh, a motor slow pressure and temperature, only different different things. So, all this can be used in your calculation. So, compressed air action. Uh, so. Uh, some of the principles that you can use. Come on lah. And then you belajar last semester. Okay, so this semester, don't worry. We won't study this. Yang ni hanya untuk chapter 1. Okay, so introduction. Okay, so the, the principle use. So law of conservation of mass. Upon continuity equation. Okay, so matter cannot be created or destroyed. It only... 
Okay, so V1, V1, A1 equals to P2, V2, A2 equals to constant. And here the law of conservation of mass. Okay, and you can use together with law of Bernoulli's equation. Okay, the point here, Bernoulli's equation. Okay, so if we equate of specific gra gravity flows horizontally to point through a tube with varying diameters, total energy at point one and two. You guess a good idea, you know, the board to the experiment you again. So, these are some of the laws used. Okay, uh, it's a type of flow. Yani flow, so you, already, uh, you already know what is laminar and turbulent. The laminar must uh, parallel layer, so fluid flow in one direction. So no disruption between layers. Maksudnya tak ada apa-apa kacauan lah. So it's only moving in one direction. So, macam dalam gambar ni, from left to right. So we consider when the flow is uniform and in the parallel layers, we consider it as a laminar flow. Meaning very smooth flow. Okay, so laminar maksudnya very smooth. Then you have a turbulent flow. Turbulent flow meaning is just like very uneven, so it's not very uncontrollable. The turbulent flow is opposite of laminar flow. Uh, it has a lateral mixing. It is not very smooth. The example we can see here. Okay, smoke rising from a cigarette. Okay, siapa rokok dekat sini? Nama ni aku. Okay. So, boleh tengok. Uh, smoke rising from a cigarette. So, you blow the cigarette. Okay, once you smoke, you blow the... Uh, your, from your mouth, the smoke. Smoke will rise first as a laminar flow. After some time, because of your environmental air wind, okay, uh, it become turbulent. Okay, first for a few centimeters, the flow remain laminar, then become unstable. Turbulent maksudnya unstable and uneven. So, you boleh tengok uh, dua-dua. Okay, so, the next pressure loss or pressure drop. Okay, so, pressure drop is a term used to describe the decrease of pressure from one point in a pipe to an another point downstream. Siapa tahu apa itu downstream? Anyone? Uh, downstream is uh, di bawah kan? From high to low. Hmm. High to low, yes. So, it's moving from higher point to lower point. Itu yang kita panggil as downstream. So, downstream adalah tempat yang bawah lah. Tempat yang bawah. Point yang bawah. Upstream adalah point yang atas. So, kalau water nak flow, dia tak boleh dari bawah ke atas. Unless you have an additional force to push it to the top. Uh, it's lalunya dari atas ke bawah because of gravity, dia senang nak bergerak. Okay, so pressure drop uh, is from one point upstream, move to lower point. Uh, the drop in pressure lah. Okay. So pressure drop is a result of frictional. Uh, so there are few... A uh, few factors influencing ataupun causing the pressure drop. Okay, mainly adalah frictional force. Okay, uh, so uh, you are the, okay, let's say you, your fluid is moving from one point to another point. So in between, because of the surface, atau, uh, surface of the pipe ataupun apa-apa lah. Uh, so, 
it can be because of uh, surface roughness uh, ataupun your fluid viscosity uh, so let's say you are not using water by using oil so the fluid viscosity will cause some frictional force okay the gc lagi teruk kalau you have a high viscosity fluid and you also have a surface roughness so it will cause more frictional force so you, it can cause a pressure drop then your flow velocity through the pipe and also type of flow lamina ataupun turbulence all this will contribute in impacting the resistance cause the pressure uh, pressure loss ataupun pressure drop So far, so good. Okay, any question? No, no. No? Okay, so we can take five minutes break. This is 8.46. We will resume at 8, sorry, 8.47 now. 8.52. Okay, take five minutes.
Okay, so are you ready? Can we continue? Yes, sir. Okay, so a few more slides to go. Okay, choice of working medium and system. Okay, so before you choose um, <coughs> this. Okay, so before we choose uh, which system to use, okay, so it depends on the environment, uh, the work, the type of work you want to do, okay, the accuracy, the speed. So there are the criteria yang kita kena tengok lah sebelum kita choose uh, whether we want to use pneumatic ke ataupun hydraulic ke ataupun combination. Uh, ataupun fully electrical uh, so ada setengah tu uh, you, normally what engineers will do dia akan tengok berapa banyak energy is dissipated dia ada satu calculation lah yang kita panggil as uh, energy dissipation calculation so we engineers always use that uh, to see which system will be effective Okay, at times, kita boleh hasilkan a lot of energy. Tapi, at the same time, kalau kita lose energy, uh, then no point lah. So, let's say you are, you are, you are generating under kilojoule of energy. But, the system is losing 80 kilojoule of energy. So, meaning your system is not energy efficient. Because, walaupun dia hasilkan under kilojoule, but it lose 80 joule macam tu je so meaning the system is not suitable okay so this kind of uh, this kind of criteria will be used to select uh, the choice of working medium and system okay so kalau your system requirement is high speed medium pressure macam I bagi tahu tadi, pneumatic normally akan deal antara 6 ke 10. Bukan 6 ke 8 lah. 8 tu uh, operation but maximum can go until 10. Okay, pneumatic system normally bawah 10 bar. Okay, so senang nak ingat. So, bawah 10. Okay, so and less accuracy. So, pneumatic uh, dia, we, we can is very accurate. Uh, dia, dia cepat tapi dia extend dia maybe kena satu tempat the next time dia kena lari sikit. Uh, tapi dia cepat. Uh, so if your system requirement is high speed medium pressure so 6 to 8 bar and less accuracy position uh, you boleh consider using pneumatic system. The pneumatic system uh, will be something suitable for you lah. Uh, so if the system requirement is high pressure, uh, meaning uh, ada dekat dengan 10, maybe 100 bar, and high precision, okay, a fluid system with oil, ataupun hydraulic system lah, kalau dia gunakan oil kan. So hydraulic system will be good. So hydraulic, macam, macam, uh, I bagi tahu tadi, so pneumatic, so, pneumatic means, uh, you gunakan pneumatic when uh, you perlukan high speed and uh, uh, low pressure, ataupun medium pressure. Uh, so kalau you nak uh, high pressure and also uh, slower speed ataupun high precision, uh, ini adalah keyword untuk hydraulic. High pressure, high precision. Dia macam very very accurate lah. Uh, so you gunakan hydraulic system. Okay, so uh, when the power requirement is high, like for forging presses, okay, dia kan industri dia ada forging presses dia mampat. Okay, so metal sheet press. Yeah, so it is impossible to use a system. Uh, 
Ha, so kalau you nak tekan ataupun bend uh, metal, you tak boleh gunakan 68 bar lah. Yang ni kalau you nak nak okay, maybe aluminium sheet yang yang nipis, you nak push and you boleh lah gunakan 68 bar. Tapi kalau sheet metal ataupun metal yang tebal yang macam keping dekat-dekat foundry kan uh, so if you are using that you cannot use pneumatic system so it is impossible to use air system but it's not powerful enough so you kena gunakan hydraulic sebab tu you tengok heavy mission dekat luar so most of the heavy mission outside uh, so example uh, macam forklift Forklift ataupun crane so, Ataupun uh, Dekat car workshop uh, Semua dia tak gunakan uh, Pneumatic okay. So using Hydraulic so, Even our power gate dekat rumah Kan uh, auto gate kan Dekat rumah So you boleh tengok ada satu piston So dalam tu you ada hydraulic oil ni tak gunakan pneumatic because your gate is uh, heavy so, kalau pneumatic tu dia push push pun tak akan buka lah your gate uh, so you tekan you tunggu ke luar kenapa gate saya tak buka because you use a wrong system you use pneumatic instead of hydraulic so if you use hydraulic uh, it will have power to open the gate Bila lah. So dekat luar tu dia memang ada uh, If you are using high power And you the, uh, Your system requires high power You need to opt to Hydraulics AI is used where quick response Of activity is required uh, Kalau you nak Something yang very macam tadi kita tengok 868 bar uh, less accuracy and you not very quick response ataupun high speed uh, you boleh gunakan pneumatic so if temperature variation range in the system is large then use use air system may run into condensation problem and oil is preferred so temperature uh, radiation range uh, so maksudnya you, your system uh, dia always the temperature fluctuate kadang-kadang uh, kosong kadang-kadang 100 kadang-kadang 200 uh, dia macam ubah-ubah then you tak dapat uh, you tak boleh gunakan air system sebab dia akan cause condensation nanti adalah berkarat then ada inside your system dah ada air bubble lah so a lot of stuff so because of this condensation problem so you need to opt for oil oil is preferred okay, so if the application requires only a medium pressure and high positional accuracy uh, you boleh combine hydronimetic Hydro-pneumatic maksudnya you gunakan uh, air well as pneumatic So you boleh, bu bukan gunakan dalam tu, ganti compressor So you have uh, two system combined So boleh juga So hydro-pneumatic, aero-pneumatic Aero-pneumatic tak adalah sebab dia pneumatic pun memang air kan uh, So maybe you ada few other combination electro-pneumatic so, electric pneumatic, electrical, electrical pipe as well as pneumatic. They combine, you become a very powerful tool. So, electric pneumatic, you akan belajar lah satu chapter and ada satu lab juga. Okay, okay so air is non-explosive. It's about the compressed air. It's not explosive. Unless uh, the tank, they melutup lah. Melutup maksudnya suddenly the air inside comes out 
so you can have some explosive but it's not because of the air so kalau ada air leakage dia letup dia bukan macam tong gas dekat rumah so compressed air is just a normal air you just compress inside okay, so it is preferred where fire or electric hazard are expected so dekat tempat yang uh, you you gas fire or electrical hazard can happen uh, so you jangan gunakan oil so oil sebab dia mudah terbakar so kalau you tahu tempat tu memang ada fire, uh, chances of fire so uh, try to avoid hydraulic okay, ataupun you need to uh, make extra safety kalau you still nak gunakan juga oil so it's not recommended it's not recommended so you maybe can consider air since it's a non-explosive okay so because air contains oxygen about 21 percent and it's not sufficient alone to provide adequate lubrication of uh, moving part and seal oil is usually introduced in the air system or uh, airstream near the actuators to provide a lubrication preventing excessive wear and oxidation okay. so dalam uh, pneumatic so dekat actuator dia kadang-kadang dia ada satu mechanism uh, for lubrication in order to prevent uh, rust karat karat dalam sistem uh, dia introduce at the end dekat actuator part uh, some oil oil uh, so dia akan provide lubrication lah preventing excessive wear and oxidation so kita tahu apa akan jadi kalau ada oxidation so dia akan maybe the surface akan ada macam lubang-lubang okay and wear so when you always put oil and keep your metal ataupun uh, your your material so it always will prevent uh, rust rust ataupun it will protect the surface so boleh juga introduce ini okay, so advantage of pneumatics the okay, air is available practically everywhere in unlimited quantity Nah, ini adalah satu advantage of pneumatic sebab uh, air is available anywhere sebab kalau kita nak hidup perlukan udara uh, so udara memang available in unlimited quantity in the surrounding so you what you need to do you just need a mechanism to take the air compress it and use for your system so itu adalah satu advantage yang very how to say very abundant yeah, abundant maksudnya memang ada banyak okay so air can be easily transferred to pipelines even over large distance okay so if you have a proper piping so you boleh transmit ataupun transport air from one point to the other without problem but provided is seal properly lah. Okay, so compressed air can be stored in a reservoir and removed as required. In addition, the reservoir can be transportable. Okay, another advantage. So you just can compress the air and you simpan dalam tangki. So tangki yang disediakan and you can just remove it anytime. You can just release it to the air. Okay. So in addition, the reservoir can, is transportable. Uh, so you masukkan dalam tangki, tangki itu you boleh bawa ke mana-mana. Uh, so it's a, it's a very uh, good, good advantage lah. Okay, so compressed air is literally insensitive to temperature fluctuation. So this ensure uh, reliable operation even under extreme condition. Uh, so yang ni except the previous case lah uh, where condensation can happen. So, kalau you boleh prevent condensation uh, but you still ada temperature fluctuation uh, so compressor is better. Uh, kalau ada temperature fluctuation 
guna gunakan hidrolik pun kadang-kadang uh, kebakaran boleh berlaku. So you want to prevent that. Okay. So compressed air offers no risk of explosion of, of fire. Okay. So yang ni dia not fire prone lah. Uh, so fire um, will not happen um, because of compressed air. Unlubricated exhausted air is clean. Any unlubricated air which escape through leaking pipe does not cause contamination. So, katakan you are the tanki ataupun you are the hose, you are transporting, suddenly hose tu ataupun pipe ada lubang. So, udara, the compressor is going out. So, it's, it's okay. Uh, because it's not causing any contamination uh, ataupun any pollution. Okay, so it's not, so it's uh, still clean. Okay, so simple construction and relatively inexpensive. Okay, so dalam pneumatic, uh, system uh, seems is dealing with the lower pressure. Tadi bawa 10 bar. Okay, so the alat-alat yang kita nak beli untuk pneumatic is not expensive. Okay, so that's why industry dia prefer pneumatic. Kalau boleh tu dia nak gunakan pneumatic system. Uh, because it's a simple construction, just with a plug and play. Uh, then uh, it's uh, not so expensive like hydraulic. Uh, so semua yang expensive expensive ni, you're comparing with hydraulic ataupun electrical system. Okay. Uh, only the thing that will be expensive in pneumatic adalah for, uh, cost for you to compress air. So compress air, you one thing you kena simpan dalam reservoir. So reservoir tu dia tak, tak dapat simpan banyak. But cost for you to cost uh, create the compress air might be expensive. Okay, very fast working medium and high working speed. Uh, so yang ni macam saya beritahu tadi. The pneumatic is dealing with uh, high speed application. Nah, kalau you nak buat constantly at very fast rate, you boleh consider lah pneumatic. Okay. And pneumatic system has uh, some disadvantage also. It's so suitable only for low pressure and hence low force application. Okay, so uh, yang ni satu drawback lah ataupun disadvantage. Uh, dia hanya boleh gunakan untuk application yang bawa ke lubang. The compressed air actuators are economical up to 50 kN. The actuators, maksudnya the end, uh, end macam piston ataupun motor, dia hanya boleh cater until 50 kN. So, kalau your application is 100 kN, you tak boleh gunakan ini. So that's one of the disadvantages lah. So generation of the compressor is expensive compared to electricity. So kalau electricity, so electricity kita generate macam mana? How you generate electricity? Jumpa tak sikit lah. Anyone? Solar? Can you repeat again? Like solar energy or like coal? Okay, solar solar energy. Okay, from coal, yes. Okay, but Malaysia, in Malaysia, what's the uh, common, common electrical generation? Hydroelectric. Hydroelectric, yes. So because we have um, rivers, so we are we are generating electric at the very mass scale. So, sekali dia generate, um, so it will be enough to house one town. Uh, macam tu. Okay, so the cost of generating electricity is much cheaper than generating a compressor at the same size. Uh, so, kalau you now generate a compressor to cater one town, it's very expensive compared to generating electricity for one town. Okay, so you 
compare apple to apple lah. Okay, so uh, the compressor air generation will be expensive. So exhaust air noise is unpleasant, and silencer has to be used. Okay, so kadang-kadang uh, because of noise uh, air, so you will think of the car even the car. Uh, workshop. So you tengah pump angin, suddenly the compressor started to the the compressor started to turn on. And so then they cause a lot of noise. Apa biasa tengok? Uh, biasa dengar yang tu. Anyone? Okay, so it will cause a very unpleasant noise lah. So you pun macam terkejut. Eh, kenapa tiba-tiba yang ni dia bergerak? So it's actually, so it's generating more uh, more compressed air uh, in order to cater uh, for you to pump your air. Okay, so when you have a uh, air noise, uh, so you kena gunakan silencer, uh, extra cost. So uh, rigidity of the system is poor. Uh, so, kadang-kadang when you are doing work, if you didn't fix the compressor ataupun uh, your system in very rigid rigid system, uh, so because of the vibration of the movement, they can bergerak. It will cause more, more uh, problem. So, you need to uh, put the compressor so you can drill the floor. Uh, so that is not moving. Tapi you can gunakan something to absorb the vibration. Okay, so rigidity maksudnya uh, is not fixed in one place. So it can be uh, poor. The air cannot seal the fine gap between the moving part, unlike hydraulic system. Okay, so air also then boleh keluar. Okay, but oil so normally will be in a fine gap. Okay, dia akan memenuhi ruang tu lah. Uh, then dia takkan keluar. Kalau boleh. Okay, so uh, it can be another disadvantage. And less precise. It's not possible to achieve uniform speed due to compressibility of air. So kadang-kadang uh, the, the compressor supply uh, will be and 10, kadang-kadang 9. Uh, so, uh, because of that, it might not be uniform. So, uh, it will affect the precision of the system. Okay, and the last disadvantage, pneumatic system is vulnerable to dirt and contamination. So, dalam, dalam uh, your compressor, because it's just taking from surrounding, so surrounding, tak tahulah, uh, dia punya sistem tu, uh, dia punya udara tu clean ke tak. So maybe it's very dusty. Then dust tu dia terus tarik dalam compressor. Uh, compress terus hantar dekat sistem. Uh, so it can have for dirt and contamination. Uh, so you perlukan uh, some mechanism lah untuk keluarkan dirt and also contamination. Uh, so yang ni kita akan tengok in the coming, upcoming slides. Uh, upcoming slides lah. Okay, so you boleh, you boleh dengar. Okay, so the general comparison between pneumatic and hydraulic system. Okay, soalan-soalan uh, ni dia selalu akan keluar lah dalam your exam. They compare pneumatic and hydraulic bagi tiga maka. So, boleh lah take a few of these points you boleh uh, can write okay so boleh tengok so it employs a pressurized liquid as fluid if hydraulic digunakan pressurized liquid pneumatic digunakan compressed gas ataupun pressurized gas okay and uh, oil hydraulic system operate at pressure up to 7 bar okay tadi pneumatic hanya 5 to 10 bars Nah, ya ni tengok, hydraulic memang untuk air pressure ataupun air power 
who can go up to 700 bar. And some of the hydraulic system can go above 700. Even 7,000. Okay, so it's very, very strong. Okay. Generally designed for flow system and pneumatic system are usually designed for open system. Okay, so open system dengan closed system, I think you are familiar lah. Okay, control volume dengan control uh, volume and apa lagi apa ya? PV and control pressure. Okay, so uh, ada, ada dua system, control open system and closed system. Okay, so you can F. Okay, so closed system. Uh, so, you, so normally will be uh, inside. Okay, so uh, the flow will come in and go. Okay, and uh, pneumatic system normally will be. Okay, okay so system gets slow down or leakage. First, uh, we need one, uh, one disadvantage. Uh, so, kalau oil di keluar, uh, ada leakage, uh, so your system slows down. Sebab tak cukup liquid okay, untuk tampung the operation. Okay, but leakage does not affect the system much more. Uh, so, even though there's uh, some leakage, so compressed air keep on entering. So, because it's in abundant, so the case is not so affecting the system, the overall system. So, valve operations are difficult because you need to consider a lot of stuff. So, easy to operate a valve because it's only using air. So, no rusting. Okay, so, hydraulic heavier in weight because uh, they terpaksa heavy because it's operating heavy application so pneumatic light in weight so nanti dekat dekat lab pun you boleh tengok so pneumatic uh, actuator and also hydraulic actuator so pneumatic selalunya dia ringan so it's dealing with lesser uh, operating pressure so hydraulic digunakan pump. Uh, so pump the memang oil dah ada, they just pump to one place to another place. Uh, so pneumatic di kena ada compressor. So you compress dulu baru you transport. Okay, so dengan so pneumatic you cakap gunakan pump. Ah uh, salah. Saya tak bagi macam. So don't for hydraulic you say you are using compressor. You are not compressing any anything. Because uh, Liquid is incompressible. Okay, so an hydraulic system is unsafe to fire Z. Uh, so fire can happen. And uh, for pneumatic, uh, the system is free from fire Z. So the other leakage point, the slalini tada fire lah. And one advantage of hydraulic, since it's using oil, uh, they automatically provide lubrication at the same time. Uh, they the uh, letter minyak siap dah dalam dalam your valve semua tu. Uh, so you tak perlu additional uh, lubrication. So untuk pneumatic, you can add such pressure arrangement macam tadi. You can actuator. So they introduce the okay, oil. Uh, so all the system inside, uh, there are some lubrication to cover current. So, here at the last decay comparing between pneumatic and also hydraulic system. Okay, so pneumatic circuit. Okay, so uh, we come to the pneumatic component classification. Uh, Yani ada satu bagian yang uh, quite important. Sebab pneumatic dari starting until the end, dia ada, selalunya akan ada 5 levels. 
ataupun flower uh, five classification. Okay, so first, uh, dia akan start dari air supply and conditioning elements. Okay, then we pergi ke input element, processing element, control element, and finally actuator. Ini dari starting until the end. Uh, so kalau you tengok dekat sini. So this is your pneumatic circuit. So macam mana I tahu yang ni adalah pneumatic sebab dia gunakan compressor. Dia gunakan compressor. Kemudian dia simbol ni. Uh, so triangle dia dia fully putih. So that shows that uh, this is a, a pneumatic. So kalau you tengok, so okay, you own uh, start from on top. Jadi selalu ni start dari bawah. Okay, so start dari bawah compressor. So FRL adalah filter regulation and lubrication unit. Ataupun kita panggil as uh, service unit. So yang ni ya, yeah. saya cakap tadi, so you compress, so you pun ambil udara dari environment. So with full of dirt, so dia kena lalu FRL unit ni dulu. Okay, you filter, regulate and lubricate. So meaning this uh, FRL unit will clean the compressor before sent to your system. So you, you are doing any. So this consider as supply element. So dia ada lima element dalam metric component classification. Uh, so, if I say supply element, you need to know what's in supply element. Lepas tu, uh, then you go to input element. So, input element, so meaning uh, you start a system. Uh, so, selalu you start a system, you have the push button. PB maksudnya push button. Ataupun uh, you have end lever, so you tarik. So, or is a... Uh, It's pneumatically actuated. Uh, so input element can be anything, any input. Uh, nanti waktu you design your circuit, ataupun uh, cuba design circuit ni dalam your pneumatic and your fluid uh, Maybe you boleh try try dulu lah. Sebab that that uh, software yang saya bagi fluid sim is something that you need to explore. So dalam tu ada banyak. So take your time. You you have uh, dalam so you just explore when your free time. Try to like design. Uh, the plug and place here. So next week we will see in our lab. Uh, next week at the lab. Eh? So dalam lab pun you boleh explore lah. So, lab class saya akan aja. We boleh boleh try, uh, try explore. Okay, so for to your lab uh, to the lab. Uh, bring, kalau boleh tu bring your own laptop so, kalau ada laptop kalau ada laptop tu you boleh share dengan kamu ok so the main thing is you need to learn sebab yang ni adalah satu skill you boleh letak dalam your CV you boleh cakap uh, I'm familiar with fluid sim uh, from Festo uh, dia ada uh, fluid sim uh, ada juga yang selalunya tempat uh, lain Uh, they are using automation studio. So, automation studio, the more general lah. Uh, you boleh gunakan untuk a lot of things. So, automation studio also you can be used to uh, simulate your pneumatic or hydraulic system. Like a circuit. Okay, so, you think of the question, input element. So, dalam input element, you letak at the same level. Okay, jangan dekat, dekat sini satu, dekat atas satu, then you also don't know which one. Okay, so you have your input element, you letak at the same level. So you boleh differentiate. Okay, I always uh, cakap good practice. Supply element letak at the level, then input element at another level, and then processing element. So input yang you bagi tu dia proses. Nah, macam dekat, dekat sini all valve. Or valve, you ada dua input. Uh, push button one and push button two. Or valve, so kalau either one is active atau on, uh, dia akan terus send signal. Uh, 
control the max activation maksudnya one input is uh, yang ni dia consider macam or gate kalau you biasa dengan digit kan uh, subject digit or gate either one okay. macam ni and wall dia perlukan dua-dua input uh, so dekat sini uh, one dekat sini pun one baru dia on so dia ada or wall ataupun and wall dalam ni ok so after input element dia ada processing element The processing element normally will process your input and then it will send a control signal. Jadi ni, so kalau yang ni dia akan choose nah, decide, kalau yang ni dia choose decide. Yang pasal valve and how to interpret all this, kita akan belajar lah in upcoming chapter. Ni kita akan belajar satu-satu. I think face to face class, I will explain better so, compared to to online. Okay, so uh, here you have process uh, processing. Uh, so then you have a control. Uh, dekat sini baru dia send a control signal sebab control element akan control your, your final power element. So power element something yang provide power lah. So dekat sini macam cylinder, piston. Dia bergerak. Uh, cylinder adalah piston. Okay, so a moving linear ataupun it can be a rotary so, uh, dia boleh tengok dekat fluid scene dia memang uh, dia arrange a ikut element ni supply, uh, input processing, maybe nama dia macam line-line scale lah uh, but they, they will put in that particular class okay, so you tekan supply element all the supply element uh, macam compressor punya symbol FRL punya symbol semua akan ada dekat sini. Okay, some will be general macam pressure gauge. Depends lah. Okay. Pasal nak create this circle, we will see next week. How to do. So Okay, so any questions so far? I think I have done with the slide for today. Uh, sir, can I ask something? Yes. So, is this all going to be done with wires or tubes? Tubes. Uh, you oh, okay. Uh, okay. You mean the physical lab? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, see if you see... Uh... Yeah, Okay, so in lab you can see some system similar like this. So whatever, uh, th this is for your simulation. Simulation meaning before, <coughs> okay, so in your uh, Uh, in your industry, okay, let's say you go to industry, so normally you have uh, engineers who will create the systems, in the production line. Okay, so maybe you all uh, are biasa pergi lagi. So later you go for internship or what, you will see all this. Okay, so in in the companies, you have uh, so many engineers uh, who will be in charge. Okay, macam saya dulu, I kerja dekat B Brown Industries in Penang. So, those who are in Penang, maybe you, are, you have seen this company lah. In bayang lepas. Okay, so, in that company, uh, we have uh, so many production line. Okay, so many production line. But, there will be only one division uh, yang kami panggil as a Central Validation Department. Uh, who will be buying all the system. They're buying from Japan, buying from China, Germany. B Brown is a German company. So this Lalunya akan beli dari Jerman. Okay, so what they will do, uh, they will buy the system. Okay, so let's say you want to uh, prepare something uh, as a, from your production. Uh, B Brown, they move to the medical side. So, katakan you nak create uh, the catheter tube. Ok, 
Seperti yang you selalunya akan cucur dekat hospital untuk for your glucose or water yang you letak dekat tangan tu so katakan you nak create yang tu uh, yang tu is a generator using a pneumatic system so what this central validation department will do they will create this uh, chart dalam uh, simulator so katakan fluid state so dia akan generate yang ni dulu Ha, kemudian dia akan tengok, ok, so letak push button, ha, push button letak 2, then letak 1. So they they will try to generate this chart first using your software. Ha, sebab kalau you tak simulate and check whether ada problem ke tak, ha, rugilah kalau you beli the physical thing. Ha, so katakan your system just using four push button tapi you pergi beli uh, 10 so company is very particular about cost apa pun pun dia nak cost cutting dia nak save uh, so kalau you beli sistem yang ada tiga push button uh, so you tak perlu uh, nabi sistem yang ada 10 push button so it will be total waste uh, so they will create this thing and they will try to simulate to see whether the function is uh, is functioning well for uh, preparing the catheter on. Kalau uh, yani you the bullet design and no problem in the simulation, baru dia can order all the components from Germany, uh, the physical component. The physical component will come after some time. Then all this line. Uh, macam you tanya tadi, all this thing uh, will not be like this in the real world. Uh, re real, uh, I will show you lah. I will show the next. So I will show example of valve lah. Ah, okay. Okay. So, yang ni adalah all yang kita tengok tadi. Boleh nampak yang ni? Slide ni? So, can you see the slide? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, you can see. So, this is the symbol in your flip screen. But, in actual, it will look like this. Nah, this is from Festo lah. Yang flip screen punya uh, manufacturer. Okay. So you can see. So memang ada dua input. So ada dua input and you have one output. So sama macam symbol ni. So you will be learning how to design this using simulator, fluid sim and as well as dealing with this unit yang ada dekat lab. Uh, so dekat lab, you, ta, you kena gunakan tube lah. Uh, so tube akan sambung dari uh, let's say the push button ke sini uh, then another push button ke sini uh, then it will go to your next element so you can add do do okay so did, did i answer your question uh, yes sir thank you sir so uh, so practically in the lab so that's why i say the subject is about skill so skill for you to develop the circuit as well as skill to use the physical unit yang ada dekat lab. Uh, so you, dekat lab pun sama lah. So you plug and place. Memang dalam drawer tu dah ada dah. You push button ada berapa banyak. So you just take and put on the on the place. Uh, then you sambung dengan wire. Then you boleh tengok uh, at the end the uh, the cylinder is moving. Uh, so, kena dekat this roller. Then start another process. You will work lah. Okay, so any other question? Okay. 
Okay, any other questions or no question? So, allow new question. I stop sharing. Okay, so uh, yesterday I saw your attendance. I'm still not putting your full name. Allow the letter full name to uh, please change. La. change. It's very hard for me to find. Uh, so, Kala, I Tadapachari, you uh, and the information is not uh, okay, then I will consider you Tadi. Uh, so, Tika Kali Tadi, WMB final exam. And then I was okay, So, try to put the full name. I think mostly put the name. Namacha Muas. Change to full name. They run Alni Sapa AL. That's all, Sapa. So, this is a tree. Okay, so I think that's all for today. Okay, um, I want to say uh, chapter one needs the Baru base until slide 25. The total ada 63. Okay, I akan bagi satu video. Satu video for you to listen for the remaining part. Okay, so remaining part, you please listen to that. Okay, I I can explain. Dengan video dari YouTube juga. So, I memang letak dekat dalam tu. So, it will explain. It will show the physical system yang ada dalam lab. Uh, so you boleh tengok lah, I think the video is dalam 34 minutes uh, inclusive of my explanation juga. Uh, so you just go through that to so try to understand. Uh, so chapter 1 ni uh, is quite important because it will set your psychology for the subject. Okay, so your understanding lah. So subject ni saya I dah bagi tahu. So it's easy to score. Okay, so it all depends on you lah. Okay, kalau you put your effort, you belajar, uh, so you you can get it. Okay, so it's not, not a problem lah. Okay, so try to put the effort. Um, okay, so video recording untuk lecture ni saya akan upload dalam YouTube. Uh, and I will give you the the addition, additional video for the remaining of the chapter. Okay, so please li uh, listen. Then uh, maybe next week kita akan buat uh, the one hour lecture tu. Kita akan buat uh, discussion. Kita akan buat discussion pasal I won't cover everything. Uh, tapi I akan cover whatever can lah the important. Uh, sebab kalau tengok dekat sini dia ada banyak. Uh, dia akan explain lah. The explanation, I can bagi dalam video tu. Okay. So, I think that's all from me for today. So, we will see, on this week tak ada apa lagi. So, we will only see next week, Wednesday morning, untuk lab, uh, one of the group. I think group 2, if not mistaken. Uh, group list is supposed to be same like the other group, uh, other, like other subjects. Uh, saya akan discuss dengan Izul nanti. Uh, yang tak ada nama tu, uh, please personal message me. Uh, so, for me to include. Okay, so thank you.